I have been reading this book, The Coming Wave, Technology, Power, and the 21st Century's Greatest Dilemma. Here's the book I'm talking about. I've been reading it. The more I flip through the pages, the more I think about Africa in the geopolitics of technology. It's a great book written by a deep mind. I'm talking about Mustafa Suleiman, co-founder of Deep Mind and Inflection AI, Artificial Intelligence. Why am I starting with this book? The book makes it clear that we are approaching a critical threshold in the history of mankind. Where is Africa in this analysis? You know, the author talks about the human society being surrounded by artificial intelligence. He talks about how AI tools will carry out complex tasks, separating businesses, producing unlimited digital content, running core government services, and maintaining infrastructure. So the book talks about a world of DNA printers and quantum technologies engineered pathogens and autonomous weapons. If you read the book, you would read about robot, robot assistance and abundant energy. Where is the, pay, the place of Africa in all this? Here's the book I'm talking about. The Coming Wave, Technology, Power, and the 21st century's greatest dilemma. Huh. So yesterday, I began to write an article entitled Technological Decoupling and Its Geopolitical Implications for Africa. I'm not done with the article. But I feel I should share my ideas with you. So in the article, I'm making the point that in recent years, the global landscape has witnessed a significant shift towards technological decoupling, primarily driven by escalating tensions between major powers, such as the United States and China. This struggle, characterized by efforts to reduce mutual technological dependencies and foster independent technological ecosystems, has profound implications for global trade, innovation, and geopolitical stability. So the theme of this show is geopolitics. When Asia transforms the world, why not when Africa transforms the world? I'm just thinking. Are you thinking along? As we grapple with issues of hunger, insecurity, poor governance, the rest of the world is moving so fast. We are not moving at their pace. We are consuming their energy. And as we consume, they generate more energy to overcome us. So in my article, I'm making the point that while much of the discourse has centered around the direct participants in the decoupling, the ramifications extend far beyond particularly impacting emerging economies 
and regions like Africa. I'm making the point that Africa finds itself at a crucial juncture in this evolving dynamic. Historically positioned as a technology consumer rather than a producer, the continent faces unique challenges and opportunities as global powers realign their technological strategies. What is Tinubu's strategy? What is William Ruto's technological strategy? What is the strategy of Ghana? You see, the pursuit of digital sovereignty by African nations coupled with their aspirations to leapfrog traditional developmental hurdles through technology intersects with the broader context of technological decoupling. Somebody is saying, what is Edmund saying? Technological decoupling. You know, when I talk about decoupling, I'm talking about that mutual technological dependencies. And now there's this fight to foster independent technological ecosystems. You know, China wants to have its own ecosystem. It doesn't want to rely on America. You know, at the beginning, we were talking about a global village, one technological space, one internet, where once you move in, you are connecting with everybody. But now, nationalism has come in, and that is decoupling. Countries are saying, no, we want to run our own internet and protect it in our own interest. So that is what I mean by decoupling. But at the moment, it is China and the United States that have the capacity to engage in this decoupling, including the European Union. But the European Union is behind a bit. They have just woken up. India is trying to find its footing. But no country in Africa is capable of decoupling. Do we need technological decoupling? Or we need one technological word where we can all tap in, tap into and harness some energy for development from? These are the issues. So the point I make here is that the stage for an in-depth examination of how technological decoupling influences Africa's geopolitical landscape has come. Everyone interested in knowledge and the future must be interested in what is going on in the technological space. If Africa fails to wake up, Africa will be colonized again, but it's in a different form. So the article I'm working on explores the strategic choices African nations must make amidst competing technological standards and influences from the United States, China, and the European Union. The work I am looking at delves into the potential economic and security implications of aligning with different technological blocks and the overarching quest for digital sovereignty within the African continent. If they cut the cable again, what happens? I'm not saying somebody cut the cable. But if they decided to do the undersea cable, Africa can be blackened out of the world technological ecosystem. Does Africa have its own technological ecosystem that it can use to bargain with the rest of the world? If you are listening to me, it should begin to worry you that beyond the quest for food, we must look ahead to say, do we have homegrown technology to compete with the rest of the world? 
so by the time I'm done with my research and article, I must have been able to create an understanding of the geopolitical implications of technological decoupling for Africa, because I know it requires deep analysis of several factors. And one of the factors is the readiness of African digital infrastructure. Do we have that infrastructure? Another factor I'm looking at is the role of international partnerships. I'm also looking at the impact on local innovation ecosystems and the broader socioeconomic outcomes. So this work aims to illuminate the pathways through which Africa can navigate these complexities, leveraging technological advancement to foster sustainable development and geopolitical resilience. Are you in this class of politics? history and power. So we are now in the age of technological politics. It has always been there, but we have moved to the new age. We talk about the fourth industrial revolution, but we are gradually moving into the fifth. The fourth industrial revolution will be short because technology is growing at a very fast pace and we need to catch up. The reason I'm recommending this book to you, The Coming Wave, Technology Power and the 21st Century's Greatest Dilemma. You'll find it on udarabooks.com, on udarabooks.com. I advise you to get this book and read it so that you will be in touch, if you are not in touch yet, with what is going on at a global level with regard to technology. Technology is growing at an exponential level, and Africa has been left behind. You should be worried. And Asia is transforming the world. Welcome to this class. You can also get this book through our WhatsApp numbers, 0302-230-0302. 